Combining your dream with a plan is a dangerous thing. Because with a little bit of luck and a lot of persistence, it might just come true. The best part about this is that it works for any dream, no matter how strange or unlikely it may seem. As long as you work hard and stick to the plan, you will succeed. And yes, my friends, I have succeeded in my endeavor to buy a huge, rusty old boat's hull and turn it into a fully operational, maneuverable and safe vessel on the water. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. As far as the story goes, we still have some catching up to do. I want to start with a job, which I personally find is one of the coolest I've ever done for this boat, installing an anchor to the bow of the boat. I got a 50 kilo M-shaped anchor and the idea is to build some kind of a structure that can hold and secure the anchor while not in use and keep the anchor chain away from the hull when the anchor is out. I started on a beautiful day underneath the bow of the boat by putting together some pieces of square tubes to figure out the shape that I ended up going for. This is what one of the side pieces is gonna look like. So first, I'm gonna tag weld these parts together. The shorter square tubes that sit perpendicular will function as the bed for the anchor shaft to rest on. After tag welding the other side, I go ahead and place continuous welds, jumping to different areas on the workpiece to prevent the material from warping. And for this part, I really don't care what it looks like in the end. I'm just putting down thick wells where I'm sure that they will stick. Next, I come up with a simple way to create a second identical part. And after welding the second part into a single piece, it's time to put the whole thing together. I hope now you can see exactly the idea I'm pursuing. This part will hang over the bow and the anchor shaft will go right through the middle in between the two side pieces. Now for the welds I tried my best and once again placed some solid welds but sometimes the gap between two pieces was too big and here I had to place individual welds. After grinding down the welds on the sides of the two side pieces I attempted to weld shut all the openings on the square tubes without putting too much effort into getting it absolutely watertight. Overall, I'm very happy with those latest welds, especially in the corner areas of the two side pieces, as they can be quite narrow. Now it's time to weld all the parts together in order to create the finished structure. I'm just gonna place some tech welds, just in case I may have made a mistake. I can still undo this quite easily. Because now we're gonna put the structure on the anchor for the first time to see if it all fits together so far. I have to find the right distance for the part to hang over the bow so that the anchor doesn't touch the bow and at the same time the structure doesn't hang over too much which would reduce its stability. Once I found the right position, I will start adding the parts that will compose the feet of the structure. I'm gonna use two simple pieces of steel L profiles to create two feet in the rear and another larger L profile to create two feet on the sides. After preparing the areas for welding, I welded on the feet. With the feet attached, I can now finalize all the remaining welding that needs to be done. Here is the finished part. I feel very confident about the welds I placed on the feet. You can see I made very thick welds without cleaning them up necessarily. Once again, this part is purely functional. It doesn't matter what it looks like. I just wanted to hold the anchor and anchor chain away from the boat's hull. Next I'm gonna drill holes through the feet and into the deck.
For the side feed I'm using M12 bolts which I deemed sufficient since I'm using two on each side. At the rear I'm using M16 bolts since I only have space for one on each side and the forces applying here may be stronger. Before we continue I need to introduce this ring. The reason I need it is that a chain won't go easily over the edge of a square tube. Adding the ring to the front should allow the chain to pass over it easily. Coincidentally, the ring fits exactly into the back of the knee of this anchor. And so after welding on the ring, I can paint it and bolt it to the boat. I'm adding rubber gaskets underneath the feet. Then I can attach the structure. Next I'm gonna install the windlass right behind the anchor holder. I drilled a small hole from below to find the perfect spot and then I drill a larger hole from above with the hole saw. Now that the hole for the chain is done, I can drill three holes to attach the windlass. I'm gonna add a self-made rubber gasket to the bottom of the windlass. And then I can bolt down the windlass. I use this black plastic box to hold the anchor chain. Now it's time to get the chain and the anchor onto the boat. First I feed the chain through the hole of the windlass into the black box. Next I take a few meters of the chain and guide it through the anchor holder. I attach the chain to the anchor. I give it a little bit more chain and then I throw the anchor in. And if all went well and my design works, all I have to do now is to pull the anchor up with the windlass. Getting the anchor itself over the edge of the structure and back to safety requires a little bit of help, but I'm sure we'll figure out a solution for this in the future. And that's my quick and easy solution to get an anchor on your boat. Next we have to get the motors running for the first time. I've bought these motors both from the same dealer. They had a fresh service done so they should work right away. I'll hook up a gasoline tank just for a quick test. I got second hand wiring harnesses with ignition switch and everything complete so this too should work right away. The telltale isn't very strong on this engine, but as long as it's there at all, we should be fine. A quick test with the control boxes, which I hadn't really bolted down at this point, seems to be working. The second engine started right away. Here, my friend who is at the helm put it in forward gear right after starting. All in all, getting the engines to start was really not that difficult. Of course, we had to do some fine adjustments, but my friend took care of that. So while my friend was adjusting the engines, I took care of some other chores, such as making signs for license plate and name of the boat, because the police and water lock guards are notorious for stopping boats who are missing any of these. Next we come to a topic which I am admittedly a bit embarrassed about, but it is unfortunately part of my life and part of this project. I'm talking of course about the junk that accumulated underneath the boat over the course of this project. 
Long story short, over the course of the past year, I was forced to give up my apartment on land and having nowhere else to put the stuff, I took it with me to the boat. Alright now, my friend is already getting impatient, so let's get going. I don't want to over-dramatize the situation, but besides getting the boat into the water, departing from this location onto the first big trip was the second most anticipated moment of the past entire year for me. I should also point out that we didn't test drive the boat beforehand. Us departing here is at the same time the very first meters we did with this boat. That's how confident I was that this boat will fulfill its intended purpose. And boy, did it not disappoint us. After departing from our location, waving goodbye to what I'm sure will be friends for life, we did our first meters very slowly, letting the boat and the engines get to know each other. The one thing I'm sure you are all waiting to know is how this boat drives. Well, let me tell you, it is unbelievable. But before I elaborate, let me adjust the trim on the starboard engine. Right, this is much better. So now, let me tell you, the boat is super easy to drive. It is very maneuverable and actually quite fast. We managed to do 9-10 km per hour without even trying, at half throttle. I presume that's because it only has a draft of about 30 to 40 centimeters, so it's more like the boat sliding over the water than going through it. The two 60 horsepower engines also proved themselves as sufficient to stop the boat at a reasonable distance. Combined with the mighty force of that 20 horsepower bow thruster, my friend didn't have any issues to get us through the water locks. For the next segment, I want to stop for a while with the hyper-editing video style and instead try to give you a glimpse of what this trip was like in reality. Going at a top speed of 10 km per hour, or just above 6 miles per hour, will suppress any tendency to be in a rush. You can actually take your time and observe the surrounding scenery passing by at a slow but steady pace. Big kudos to my friend, by the way, who stuck with me in the freezing cold for an entire day. Now, on the topic of those transoms, it seems that the plates I added to the bottom really fulfilled their purpose. We didn't feel that the shape of the transoms were slowing us down in the slightest. As the night fell, the trip remained without incidents. We encountered some nocturnal monstrosities. The engines kept pushing relentlessly. Many a bridge crossed our path. The further we went, the more elegant the surroundings. The third and last water lock stopped us only briefly. And so we drove onward towards our destination. And just like that, the boat ended up at my chosen home. A moment I anticipated for exactly one year. Looking back, I must humbly admit that it couldn't have happened without the help of a lot of great people and not the least a very large amount of sheer luck. And that's our video for today. Thank you for taking the time to join me on this journey. I wish you with all my heart that you can also pursue your dreams.